We're now turning our focus to entrepreneurial development, which is also affected by new continuing policies. Joining me now is a specialist consultant with expertise in entrepreneurship and business development. She's also the director of entrepreneurship for the Tony Entrepreneurship Program. Amanda, the Thank you so much for joining us on the program. Oh, my pleasure. Thank you very much for having me. So, uh, let's talk a little bit about the elections. Your, your, your observations and thoughts, uh, you know, about this process, this election process, presidential elections, election just uh, a couple of hours, 11, 48 hours. I think it's fascinating to be in Nigeria, um, during, particularly during the election period, because that's the time when you really begin to hear what really matters to the common person, yeah? In terms of the economy, you know, you know, what are their pain points, yeah? Is it around the infrastructure, around water, the, 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 the price of food, you know, I mean, you know, just transportation, etc., etc. So for me, it's, you know, as an outsider, it's absolutely brilliant to just watch the two parties debate and discuss, yeah? And I'm looking forward to being here on Saturday, waking up on Sunday morning or Monday, and hearing the results, yeah? I've talked to my colleagues in the office and to my friends, um, you know, in the time that I've been in, in Lagos, about what it is that they're looking for, what change are they looking for. Inevitably, we all look for change, and it's fantastic that in Nigeria we have a democracy, yeah? and, and, and people are actually openly debating and discussing issues. You know, to, you know similarly in the UK right now, we're preparing for an election. Yeah? My other country of origin is India, We've had a massive, massive um, election there, and, and, and a real change in, in direction in, 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 in the way that that country is going. So I'm absolutely looking forward to it. Another thing I'm very sure that since you know, you're know next, you're an expert in business development and entrepreneurship, we'll be looking at policies and initiatives that will encourage entrepreneurs to grow in Africa. Now, with our situation, you know, talking about the fact that we've we either might have you know, a continuity or might have new policies. But looking at it as a whole, do you think that there are policies and initiatives that actually encourage entrepreneurs to grow? Absolutely. You know, you do, in terms of Nigeria, entrepreneurship is in, is in the Nigerian DNA. The Nigerian economy is not is thriving, yes, because of government intervention and support. They're doing the job for which they are elected. But without the private sector, without the entrepreneur, um, the economy would not be growing at the pace at which it, at the pace at which it is growing. So the role and the contribution of the small, the small, the medium entrepreneurs from the startup right up, you know, through the, the value chain is vital. You know, your own um, finance minister will tell you that that their contribution, that their role to 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 really keeping the wheels of any economy going. Yeah? Nobody, nowhere in the world can you ignore the power and the, the contribution, um, the intelligence of the entrepreneur, wherever you are. You know, no wonder now that there is a global movement, it literally called Global Entrepreneurship's Movement. And Nigeria, because of the size of its economy, the size of its population, is a highly educated but also, it's a very young population. And where do you find most of your entrepreneurs? They are in that 20 to 30 um, age bracket or the demographic. And in launching our own program, it's, it's one initiative amongst many around supporting entrepreneurship. But what for me has been so, so amazing is that it's one idea, an idea of the Tony Elmery Entrepreneurship Program team. Which, uh, which we unleashed onto the world on the 1st of December. We launched our portal on the 1st of January. We got 20,000 applications. Okay, 20,000, can I just finish? From Pan Africa, Francophone, Anglophone, and, 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 and Lucifer. Now, tell me some, give me some amazing ideas that are really connected. Pan Africa in one, uh, in one go. Dr. Minor, this is just one in many. It seems as if. Um, it's been more public sector driven than private sector driven. So looking at encouraging entrepreneurship, you know, in Africa, Nigeria now, should it be more public sector led or private sector led? Well, I think what's exciting about TV is that it's private sector led. And not is it only private sector led, it's led by an African 
Um, so the, the, the program is led by an African, it's made in Africa, and it's made, and it's for Africans. I think that's the fundamental uniqueness about tea, that it is homegrown, right? Um, it's not an offshoot of some American program or some European program, and that is fundamentally important. The second is that he has made a phenomenal commitment. You know, he is using, he is wealthy, but he is using, he recognized with wealth comes responsibility. And he is using his responsibility and his wealth to support, through his philanthropic arm, the Tony Ogilvy Foundation, to support and invest in African entrepreneurs. I can't think of a better way of using your wealth than to empower the next generation of, of African entrepreneurs. Yeah? Okay, so no, that's just so it's a long-term commitment. It's, okay. it's long-term and it's sustainable. But that's just one, you know, that's just one individual. Looking at it as a whole, should the private sector lead you know, the growth and development of entrepreneurs, or should it concentrate mostly with the public sector? No, absolutely not. They have an absolute role to play. And and, and, and Mr. Tony Miller is leading by example. We can sit here and say the private sector should do this, and they should that, and the public sector should do this. But you, at some point, you have to stop talking and start doing. Um, and for me, that is exactly what the foundation is doing. It's saying we're going to put the um, money where our mouth is. We're going to commit the hundred thousand. We're going to make a long-term commitment, ten years, long-term, sustainable, scalable program. We do see this impacting. So what we've done is to create a framework and an infrastructure. I'd like to think that other private sector leaders, other um, public sector leaders, will look at this program and the impact of this program, and they will hold us accountable over the next 10 years. You know why? Because we've said we want to grow 10,000 entrepreneurs. We want to contribute at least 1 million new jobs to it across Africa, right? We want to contribute at least $10 billion to the African economy. We have to be held accountable to those goals that we've set ourselves. We believe fundamentally that, that, you, know, that, that, that the, you know, the solution to Africa's challenges, and I don't see them as problems, because challenges are also opportunity lies with the entrepreneurs and with African entrepreneurs. But what, best, what approach best suits private sector intervention? The, exactly what we're taking, right? Which is to find those uh, from zero to three year old businesses, um, create an enabling environment where they, we can provide them skilled development training. An entrepreneur is not, doesn't fall from the sky, you grow an entrepreneur. How do you become an entrepreneur? By making mistakes, implementing them, what you learn from it, and going on to the next stage and the next day. I know I've done that for the last exactly. 30 years. I'm asking what your experience has been like, because you've worked very closely with uh, entrepreneurs, you've seen them start from, from ground zero to where they are. Could you just tell us your experience well, with you know, some uh, entrepreneurs Across Africa. I mean, I can, I can talk about entrepreneurship in, in the third person, but I can talk about it from my own experience. I made over 50 films from, you know, a very short, a 10 minute movie to, you know, a feature films. And I know that every single film I made is like starting again. You go from an idea and you have to see it on the screen, right? It requires management, it requires discipline, it will not requires organization, it requires skills, right? It requires the ability to, to send your idea, um, i.e. to find paying customers for, for your ideas. In my case, it's always funders, right? I have to actually be able to convince you that you should part with your money and I will make a program where I will tell a story that is really going to resonate with, with an audience, right? So similarly, you know, so as a, and, and also as a mentor, um, you know, over the last 30 years, Yes, one of the you know, one of the things that really one of the things that really really attracts me um, in working with entrepreneurs is their passion, determination, and commitment. Yeah, you can if you don't have that, if you don't have that fire in your belly, right? No amount of government money and interventions or even private sector is going to do. If you don't understand what is it that the customers, what is the customers' pain that you are the solution to? If you don't have, you have an idea, and if you haven't actually looked at it, market viability or opportunity, if you haven't done any of that analysis, then it just remains an idea. And our program is structured to take the 1,000 that we have now selected, is to take them over the next nine months 
from an idea to an implementable business plan um, and, and help them, you know, a, a really a scalable and an investable um, a, a business that, you know, of the thousand. Yeah. Men. <clears throat> sorry, sorry to do that, but looking at the policies and looking at um, um, the, you know, the implementable, how implementable these policies are, it seems as if, you know, initiatives like the one you've actually just mentioned usually are not sustainable. And so, at the end of the day, we're talking about elections, we're talking about probably continuity, we're talking about maybe uh, a new government coming in, and we're looking at the private sector buying into all the policies that any of these governments will be bringing you know, on board. And they have initiatives that have already started to encourage entrepreneurs to grow. But how sustainable these policies that the private sector has actually come up with you know, be in terms of what you know, the government at the time will be coming up with? I, you know, what, we're, what we've come up with is a program which is very well structured. It's based on a very solid foundation. Is based on the on, on the foundation that it's long term sustainable and scalable and is Pan Africa. Um, of the twenty thousand that, that that you know that responded to our challenge, um, what we we are learning a lot from. They have their finger on the pulse. They know what the trends are, right? In terms of where the pain point is, for, where the opportunities are for their business ideas. So we've listened, we've read every single application form. We've listened and we've seen certain patterns emerging. I'd like to think that the, the, the infrastructure that we've created through our program, we will come up with, we will throw up some ideas which could lead to some a formulation of some policies, which the other private sector leaders, in not just in Nigeria, but Pan-Africa, might want to adopt. But certainly government might want to listen to us. Why? Because we will be creating our policies based on evidence. And the evidence is the entrepreneurial network that we have just created, which is pan Africa. Now, just before I let you go, Amanda, uh, looking at the different business environments in Africa, is it possible that a single approach can work for pan Africa entrepreneurship, just like what you're mentioning now? Is there a one size fits all kind of model to solve an entrepreneurial, entrepreneurial challenge in Africa? No, absolutely not. But what we have, what we can do is to create what I call the gem, and, 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 and see the ripple effects from that by having a really well-structured training program. These are things that can be re repeated and, and, and scaled uh, by having mentoring in our program, by providing seed capital to entrepreneurs who have been through a training program so they know how best to use that, use that funding, right? By creating the networking and the network opportunities for intra-Africa trade, that's what we will do when we connect our 1,000 Pan-African entrepreneurs online as, as they do their 12-week program, but also when we bring them together in a group like, can you imagine 1,000 Pan-African entrepreneurs gathered in Lagos uh, in July? Come and join us. Uh, well, I'll try. And thank you so much for joining me on the program this morning and sharing your perspectives with us, uh, looking at entrepreneurship in Africa. Uh, my reminder there is an expert in entrepreneurship and, and business development. She's also the director of entrepreneurship for Tony in the new entrepreneurship program. But that's it on today's show. Thank you so much for being a part of it. If you missed the program, log on to youtube.com forward slash channels web forward slash business morning to catch up. And please don't forget to follow us on Twitter. I'm Harris Abbey. Bye for now.